Hello, folks. This is Joe from My Geek Scene at YomaCon 2016 with John St. John, a.k.a. Duke Nukem. That's right, baby. A.k.a. the second person, no, the first person to ever be interviewed twice on My Geek Scene on video. Oh, oh what a privilege and an honor. And a.k.a., from what I understand, the king of YomaCon once again. Oh, you heard? I heard. Yeah, last night in a uh, crazy panel, I actually managed to pull it out at the last second. I bet Ian Sinclair told you about that. No, 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 no. Um, no. Certain person, Jonesy, um, had uh, <laughs> had mentioned that he's he's off camera, folks. He has no idea. Oh, hi. Yes, we're. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I have the crown back. I didn't wear it today, but uh, I'm I'm happy to be once you know, again the king of Yomagon. I Yomagon. requested that. I can't uh -huh. do this interview anymore. Just oh, okay, we're out of here. Up in the table. <laughs> Table flipping during an interview. Well, I didn't ask you this question the last time. What was mm -hmm. your uh, first exposure to video games? Not as a voice actor, but just as you. Well, I'm considerably older than you guys, so I played Pong in the arcades when that first came out. And then, uh, let's see, what my other favorites? Joust and Defender and... What, what, was the, what, what was the video? You guys probably remember. You spin the dial and it had the geometric figures. Tempest. Tempest. That was Tempest was my game back in 1970 something, and uh, <laughs> that was my first exposure to video games. Of course, nothing that had any voice work or even music for the most part. Yeah, so. besides blips. Blips. Of, blips. Boop. 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 Yeah. It wasn't even that complex with blibbity bop. You got one or two. Blibbity bop. Blibbity bop. Would it be too complex for those games back in the day? Don't you think? That's true. Too much. Too much memory taking up. And I'm not talking Space. about David Lee Ross, like, scooty bop de bop you know, nothing like that. <laughs> Bozy bozy bop, diddy bop, I ain't got nobody. I like the acoustics in this room. It actually is pretty good. <laughs> Since you were in radio broadcasting, were there any influential DJs or radio personalities? Oh, very much so. Um, and I just learned this in the last year that uh, when I was a, uh, a DJ on Cape Cod back in the early 80s, uh, they're a radio station out of Boston, WBCN. I would air check them every morning because I love their morning show and I'd rip material off from them. Billy West was the character voice on uh, on the show on WBCN every morning. And I didn't even realize that until I met him last year. And I said, yeah, I used to love listening to WBCN and, and air checking them. And he goes, oh, so you've been listening to me for a long time. And I'm like, holy shit, that was you? I didn't even know. Oh, I'm sorry, I just said shit. I don't censor my guest. Oh, okay, fucking A. <laughs> it's a good thing. Now we just made this video not safe for work. All right. All <laughs> right. Well, I mean, we have a PG version from the last one, so it's a little bonus. Yeah, and you can always bleep me out. It's no, okay. I don't, I don't, I refuse to do that. Oh, okay, I'll do it myself, mother -er. That works. <laughs> or you can throw out curse words whenever you can talk. Oh, you know? right, right, I could do that. So, um... Why was George Carlin an influence? Um, well, when I was in junior high school, um, he had an album that came out in, I think, 1975 called a FM and AM, where he did uh, Wonderful Wino Radio, and I used to imitate him. And the kids at school would say, God, you sound just like George Carlin's you know, DJ voice. You should be on the radio. And I took it to heart. I went down to a local radio station and said, I want to be on the radio, and they hired me. And it just took off from there. But he was my influence because of that album, specifically. Wait, did you have any favorite comedic bits by him? I um, Al Sleet, the hippy-dippy weatherman. I always liked that. Um, the, the seven words you couldn't say on TV or radio was a huge influence on me. I've always tried to find ways to say them without getting in trouble. Well, you already threw it on the video already, so. Yeah, yeah true. But I mean, on the radio back when. And, and, and in my early radio career, I was fired at least a dozen times for things I said on the air that I thought was clever. But, uh, you know, you can't, you can't be on the air in the Bible Belt, like in Virginia, and say things like, oh, there's the Beatles, come together. Well, that's a good trick if you can do it. They don't like that. They don't like that kind of humor on the radio. So I got fired, you know, many times just because I thought I was so clever with my blue humor. Did you have any Spinal Tap moments on air? Spinal tap moments. You mean choking on my own vomit, for instance? I mean, did you turn it up to 11? Oh, to 11. Ours doesn't go to 11. It's only a thousand watt AM station. There's no 11. Uh, does that make any sense? <laughs> that makes no sense at all. But you didn't have any spinal tap moments on air? Spinal tap moments, specifically, what do you mean by like a spinal tap moment on the air? Comedic mishaps on air. Oh, yeah, a lot of comedic mishaps. That's what made great radio back in the day. You don't hear those anymore because all the DJs today who are very underpaid are just reading liner cards about, 
hey, come out and meet us at Bob Stahl Chevrolet. We're giving away bumper stickers. You know, it's all bullshit today. You know, at one point, I actually thought about becoming a radio DJ since I liked music so much. But then right. I thought about it. It's like I would have to listen to a lot of stuff that I can't stand. Over and over and over and over and over again. And that would kill me. So You know, and, and my, my kids find this hard to understand. I To this day, I cannot listen to any record by Journey. Kansas, Boston, and I loved those acts when I was young, but as a DJ, playing the same songs over and over and over again, day to day to day, you just get totally sick and tired of it. So there's some songs I could live without ever hearing again. Oh, man. Journey at the top of the list. Well, I'm not going to start saying she took the midnight train. <laughs> <laughs> Any way you want it, that's... No, don't get me started. Oh, my goodness. Um, did you, um, since we'll just... We'll go back into voice acting for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Any influential voice actors when you got oh, started? Without a doubt. I think uh, most voice actors will tell you that Mel Blanc was a huge inspiration for them. Yeah. Uh, I go off the chart a little bit as far as that goes. I mean, Mel Blanc was number one for me, but then I loved like Gary Owens. Do you even know who Gary Owens was? He passed away a few years ago. He Sadly, was on a show called Laugh In back in the 60s when I was a little kid. My parents would allow me to see this show. And he was the announcer. Uh, and because he was on, on TV on Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, and he was a DJ on KMPC in Los Angeles when I was a kid, I, I loved his voice. Gary Owens, the Geo Show on KMPC. And he'd say things on Laugh-In like, never put a cobra in your neighbor's shower. He had a lot of really silly little sayings. But that's sound advice. Yeah, it is. Uh, so Gary Owens was a huge influence on me, too. Uh, some of the big announcers of the time, Casey Kasem. Okay, I, I do know that name. I grew up listening to him on Armed Forces Radio when I was a child and we lived in Europe. I would listen to American Top 40 on Armed Forces Radio with Casey from Hollywood. And now we're up to our long-distance dedication. I used to love that show. So he was a big influence on me as well. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, ha since you're primarily known for video games mm -hmm. and you do commercials and whatnot, have you ever expressed interest in voicing for anime? Not as another paid gig, but just... Um... I'm not a huge fan of anime because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't really understand it because probably just because I'm too old. Um, Why are you at an anime con then, sir? <laughs> sir? <laughs> well, so this isn't Yomacon is far more than an anime con. con. No. It's far more than that. Isn't this more of a pop culture con, don't you think? Because there's a little bit of everything here. You got artists here. You have writers here. You have voice actors. You've got anime cosplay. Um, but it, even whether I've had any interest in it or not, I'm in the last couple of days, in fact, had offers to do stuff for that uh, company Funimation. Ooh. So they're asking me if I'd be interested in doing some, some anime uh, dubbing. And it's like, does it pay money? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll record anything for money, except ads for the Republican Party and gun and knife shows. I will not do those. Topical. I, I draw the line right there. Well, folks, Thank you. Joe from My Geek Scene is just about as neutral as it gets. So if you have any issues, take it up with John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go Netflix ahead, hate me on Facebook, screw me on Twitter, I don't care. Yeah, other than that, like what you like, do what you do. Yeah, just there be you good go. Just be good people. One thing that I found interesting, I saw that you were a fan of Dylan Carlson's Earth, the band. Earth, the band? No, the name of the band is Earth. I was checking out your Facebook page, and one of the things that you liked was, I it's must a drone band. It must have been a clip that I saw that I liked, so I just, you know. Ah, uh, well, I guess, sorry. I can't say I'm a huge fan because it, it must have just well, been a really uh, good video clip. All right, clip. I'll just, I'll just, oh, there's no way that Earth has video clips because their songs are long, especially like the, and it's drone, so it's just low fi Wow, why would I like that? Are you I sure you know. were on my page? Yes, I was on your page. Wow. Yeah, we're, we're frenzies on Facebook. Yeah, we are. I know. So. We go way back. <laughs> yes, to earlier this year. That's uh -huh. about it. But no, I, I try to be thorough and finding research on people while doing research, should I say. And that's what came up. And I was like, I know that band. I have a few albums by that band. I was hoping to have a conversation about it. Went over well like a wet fart. Thank you yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, we'll just segue into the next thing. All Best right. concert you've been to. Best concert? Yes. Ever in my life? Um, had to be, um, and, and not just because it's Paul McCartney, uh, at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, but because I got to meet him backstage. Ooh. And uh, it's a rare opportunity to get to meet Paul McCartney. But it, it was the typical radio station DJs lined up, and he walks up to you one at a time. You, you get to talk to him for 10 seconds, and nice to meet you, mate, whatever. But for me, that was just a thrill. And the show itself was really great. 
Um, I also got to go to Live Aid way back when, 1985. That's so and long ago. That was a long time ago, but it was a huge show. And I remember uh, starting the show at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, and on the screen we're seeing U2 performing in London. And by the time our, our concerts were coming uh, to a close in, in Philly, they had flown over, and then they performed in Philly as well. That's insane. That was crazy. Very cool show, though. What? Now, I missed Old Cella this year, which would have been great. You know Old Cella? No, I'm not familiar. Okay, you know Coachella? Yes. Okay, so they had Paul McCartney, they had Neil Young, they had Bob Dylan, all performing at Old Cella is what they were calling it. And I would love to have gone to that, but ticket prices were insane and I didn't have the time. No, I mean, it's just when they get too high, it's like, you know what, I'll just stick with my albums. I'm good. Now, see, and they're living the dream, too. Even those bands that, that are one-hit wonders, man, they make a living out of just touring and playing songs that they know so well. They've played so many times, they can do it with their eyes closed. It's like... Muscle memory. Exactly. Just so easy for them. I want to make easy, easy money like that. I'd love to have a one-hit wonder song and bank on that the rest of my life. Really? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Because uh, that's an interesting question, though, that I ask... Uh... Um, musicians, would you rather be known for being a one-hit wonder or just being like you've put out quality music time after time, but you have a small following of fans that will dedicate uh, dedicate it to you and will support you through thick and thin? Okay, so so the choice is a one-hit wonder, but it's huge, and you ha you play to big big venues mm -hmm. or quality material, but very few fans. That's easy, one-hit wonder. <laughs> it's it's about the money, baby. Fair enough, fair enough. Has there been a dream concert that you would like to attend? It could be from any time. Oh. Yeah, I know these questions that you're not normally asked during an interview. Oh, that's fine. But but now I have to think about it. Uh, dream concert? Hmm. Well, there are some that I've missed that I wish that I had been able to see before. Like uh, Prince, I would love to have seen Prince. Okay. Didn't get to see Prince in the last few years. Um, never saw Michael Jackson in concert. And I would love to have done that. Never got a chance to. Let's see what other rockers died this year that I didn't get to see. The, David Bowie. I never saw David Bowie in concert. However, I did go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland and saw his, his, uh, his outfits. Oh, my God. He was tiny. Him and Mick Jagger. They're tiny, tiny people. I can imagine. Lemmy Kilmeister of Motorhead had passed away earlier this year, too. Mm -hmm. So it's just been a, a horrific year. It's been a banner year. Yeah, really, for, for death rock. Oh, my goodness.